welcome to a behind the scenes look into the museum collections at Zion National Park. My name is Amy McKinney and I'm a museum technician here, which means that I'm responsible for documenting and taking care of over 880,000 items that we have in our collection. Today we're in our workroom and behind me we have some of the cabinets where we store our museum collections, but we've pulled out a few of our favorites um, to show you some things that aren't on exhibit. Uh, so we're going to be talking about a couple of different periods of Zion's history. Um, the first is prehistoric times and then um, some early pioneer settlement in the park. Uh, so the first item that I want to talk to you about is this um, sandal here. Um, it looks a bit like a modern moccasin, uh, but it was actually um, discovered during one of the earliest archaeological excavations in the park in the 1930s. In 2016, we were able to have a piece of the yucca fiber, which is a native plant to the desert landscape here, radiocarbon dated, and it was found that it dates to approximately 685 to 885, um, which means that it's over a thousand years old, and it's in remarkable condition for its age. Uh, the second thing I want to talk to you about is a little bit more common of an archaeological object that we would find in the park, and they are pottery sherds. So the first one you'll see here, um, it's a bit of a red, reddish-orange sherd. It has a bit of a curve in it, so it could have been part of a larger rounded vessel. The second piece here um, is a smaller sherd that has a white glaze with a gray um, detail in it. And so these were both part of more recent archaeological excavations that were done in the park. Um, and it's more common for us to find these smaller pieces than a full intact sandal like that. Um, but also in the park we find a lot of projectile points. This one here is a bifacially flaked, which means that it's been worked on either side to get that fine point on the edge. And it's made of obsidian, which is a really common um, volcanic material um, that's very sharp, so it would have been a great tool used for hunting. Um, and I've also pulled out another uh, projectile point that I like. You can see that it has some notch edges at the bottom, um, and it also has the tip broken off. And although we can't be certain, it's fairly likely that that could have been the result of an impact. So if this piece was being used for hunting, uh, the tip would have broken off when it hit whatever it was being aimed at. Another item that we have in our museum collection is this winnowing basket. Although it's not from prehistoric times, it is a more modern example of um, some of the native culture that still exists in the park. Um, so this basket was made mostly of willow and it would have been used to separate um, the grain from the casing. Um, so that's a really great example of some of our prehistoric and ethnolog uh, ethnological items that we have in our collection. Um, some of the other things that I have pulled out for you uh, document early pioneer settlement in southwest Utah. Um, members of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, also known as Mormons, were the first settlers to this area. And um, they came to Salt Lake City in 1847 and uh, under their leader Brigham Young. And then from there, they did various expeditions to explore southwest Utah. And so here we have a powder horn you can see that it is very much horn shaped and it has a leather um, binding and um, opening here that would have been used to hold gunpowder. And this powder horn actually belonged to Nephi Johnson, who was the first white man um, to see and explore Zion Canyon. Now, one of the first economic ventures that the Mormons underwent was settling um, and producing cotton in southwest Utah around St. George. And um, this doily here was actually produced from 
cotton that was created um, at the Washington Cotton Factory, which was constructed between 1866 and 1870. It has a very intricate design um, and tassels along the edges. Um, and it was crafted by Mrs. Abigail Walker somewhere between 1870 and 1890. So this piece is over 100 years old. And then the final object that I wanted you to look at uh, was a map that was created in 1960, uh, 1936. Um, it was actually used as a museum prop uh, for the second museum in the park, which was near Canyon Junction. But this map has locations of some of the earliest homesteads around Springdale and Rockville, and even in Zion Canyon. Um, you may notice that the map says Isaac Behuman, um, and his name is actually misspelled. Uh, but he was the one who supposedly gave Zion its name. So this map, although it was produced a little bit later, is a really great example of some of the early homesteads and documenting of their location. So thank you all for tuning in. This is just the first of a three-part series where we're going to highlight um, different uh, periods of time in Zion's history through the museum collections. Bye. <laughs>